It's gonna be one of the tougher videos I've had to make. I've heard that uh, in terms of global warming, that water vapor is the major contributor. The answer is no. The sun is the greatest contributor to global warming. Changes in atmospheric water vapor will change Earth's temperature, and carbon dioxide dictates how much that temperature will change. To use an analogy, carbon dioxide is the thermostat. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases dictate how the space heater works and the sun is the fuel. And with carbon dioxide representing 400 parts per million of the air. 400 parts per million by volume is greater now than it has been in at least 800,000 years. The laws of physics therefore demand that Earth's temperature increase. It's actually a minor contributor. And it's actually good for plants if it were to increase. No. Well, it, it's, it's certainly true that more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere um, increases plant growth. No, that is certainly not certainly true. Different species of plants react to different levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Some have benefited and will continue to benefit. Most have not and will not. It's also the case that the most ubiquitous and strongest uh, greenhouse gas is, as you say, water vapor. Anomalous water vapor in Earth's atmosphere has a residency time of about 10 days. Anomalous carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere requires about 900 years before it will reach equilibrium with Earth's oceans, after which it will take tens of thousands of years to slowly be sequestered on the ocean's floors. This is why climatologists have concluded that humans have delayed the next ice age, perhaps even making Earth skip it entirely. And my understanding of the science is that the IPCC's, uh, the consensus... Um... The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change studies what the worldwide scientific consensus is regarding human-caused climate change. If you want to know what all of the world's experts agree on, read the IPCC's reports view or predictions of, of, of warming. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change does not make any predictions of warming, nor do any climatologists, nor do any climate models. Climatologists make projections, not predictions, based on the laws of physics and initial boundary conditions. The IPCC assesses climate models. They did not and do not produce any. Depend on and more CO2 causing more water vapor, so it's the amplification effect of, of CO2. Yes, more atmospheric carbon dioxide means a warmer atmosphere. A warmer atmosphere can hold more water vapor, which will also warm the atmosphere. Equilibrium is reached in about 10 days. Uh, of CO2 on, on water vapor that the, the, is critical to the values they get for, for, for global warming. The value is from 2.9 centigrade to 3.1 centigrade for a doubling of carbon dioxide. Note that we have already added 30% more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and Earth has warmed about 1.2 centigrade. But this all has to be proved and the only proof is in observations, matching your predictions against observation. Scientists do not do predictions. Scientists do projections. And every year that passes, the gap between prediction and observation has widened. Yes, and it is supposed to. Climate models are based on initial boundary conditions, based on observed atmospheric carbon dioxide, methane, aerosols, water vapor, cloud cover, ocean heat budget and transfers, and prevailing wind directions and speed, to name a few. Since scientists cannot predict changes after these boundary conditions are set, future observations must diverge from past projections. If they did not diverge, the models would be smarter than God. And that you know, if, they'd been, if they were true scientists, they'd be asking ourselves, well, actually, we have to revise our, we have to revise, you know, perhaps there isn't so much of an ampli amplification effect. There is, there are, and scientists know what they are. But that is a matter for scientists to work out, not to justify their predictions, but to change, to accept that they need to change their understanding of what's going on in the Earth's atmosphere. 
They know already in exacting detail. That is why climate models accurately predict, for example, global average temperature. Thank you. Thank you very much. Note that almost all of what he said is false, yet his parishioners still applauded. I am amazed. What happens if you run the world's best climate models to project global average temperature into the future when you can, number one, know what future atmospheric carbon dioxide levels will be? Number two, know what future atmospheric methane levels will be? Number three, Know what future atmospheric aerosol levels will be. Number four, know what future solar variation will be. And number five, start with observed boundary conditions. In other words, if scientists knew beforehand how the initial boundary conditions would change, how well would future projections of global average temperature match observation? The answer is extremely closely. Scientists know how climate forcing changed in the past. Climate models fit past observed global average temperatures based on those observed past changing boundary conditions. This shows that the climatologists correctly model climate change. This is why projections include different levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Scientists cannot know how human behavior will change in the future when it comes to burning fossil fuels. So models use different values for future atmospheric carbon dioxide. Increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is not a benefit for most plant species. Different plant species have different requirements for optimum growth. And very few plants receive what they require for optimum growth. If you put this um, or a tomato plant in a greenhouse and provide it with extra CO2, it will grow faster with more bulk up to a point. Once it reaches that point, extra CO2 will not help it grow. You will need to increase light intensity before the plant will take advantage of that extra CO2. Increasing light intensity helps only up to a point also, after which you must increase water and nutrients. There comes a point when no additional CO2 will help. The problem is almost all plants on Earth are not in greenhouses, and we cannot increase light intensity, water, and nutrients for them. The extra CO2 will give most plants on Earth no benefit. Rupert Darwall has no knowledge about the subject of human-caused climate change, and he should be ashamed of himself.